Okay, so the whole table's gonna be full, or no? Just to her. I could bring them out now. They could just see. No, I just want to know so I know how close to bringing the camera. It's no big deal. You could, you know, do the end and then do. That's cool. But this up to her. Okay. I just want to know. continuing to acknowledge those in Chicago who are adding to the black excellence and the greatness of our city. So today we have two guests uh, for this segment, Ms. Lakeisha B. and Mr. Christopher Greer. Hey, how y'all doing? Thank you all for joining us today. All right. We glad will. to be here. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm grateful to have you all. We will be acknowledging them for their back black excellence as I stated, and we will also go into topics about love and relationships. We're going to be giving real life examples because a lot of times uh, the people don't have the wherewithal, the knowledge to successfully pull off what, you know, their objectives. So I want to welcome you all. How are you all doing? This evening. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Trying to stay warm out here. Yes, you know, snow. Oh, yeah. Here we I like go again. snow. I like snow. Why? Because I got an SUV. You know, <laughs> I do donuts Switch in the middle of the damn ride. I need to be out That's just, oh my God. 
That's that's <laughs> Chicago, you know. We didn't have this crazy it. weather. I that's all the part. I don't care. I still hate it. I look. I'm not a fan of it. Either. <laughs> I, just, I just been born. I'm born here. Like I, I still hate it. It doesn't matter. Every winter, I'm like, here we go. Here we yeah. go. Winter. Yeah. I get sick. My kids get sick. Yeah. Everybody just gets sick. Spring and fall are my favorite season. Yeah. Mm. But yes, I'm going to start it off. Let's start off with some recognition. And ladies first. And I'm going to start off with Miss Lakeisha B. You all may not know who Miss Lakeisha B is, but if you're in the industry and you like movies and you watch TV, then maybe you she looks familiar to her, to you. You know, she out here, she doing her, her thing. She ain't doing nobody else's thing. She doing her thing. Ain't that what we say at Shalom? Don't do my thing, do your own thing. So let me tell you all about Miss Lakeisha B's thing. And why she's being recognized for her black excellence and continuing to add to the uh, the greatness thereof of this city here. She is a singer and an actor. This has she is basically living out her childhood dream. So I see that you auditioned for American Idol. I did. How was that experience? That was years ago. Oh, <laughs> that was an experience. Yeah, I was in high school at the time. And um, first of all, I've always been shy okay. when I was younger. So like my grandmother, she knew like I loved to sing. So she would always try to get me to sing in front of the family during the holidays, you know, because of course I don't want to do that then, you know, but I would just never do it. So um, she passed away when I was about seven. Okay. And um, it's just, I always just had that passion for the arts, yeah. you know. Singing was my first passion, but anything as far as singing, dancing, whatever, anything it was performing. I just like to do. Performing, yeah. yeah. So when I got to high school, I became a little bit more outgoing. Um, heard about the American Idol auditions. I'm like, okay, so let's go and see, you know, what this is all about. Okay. Went to those auditions. First of all, things are not like they seem like on TV. Okay. You don't just get in front of the judges. Okay. You know, you mm -hmm. don't, that's not what it is. You meet their mm -hmm. producers first. Okay. So, you know, crowds of people, I believe it was at the Lansing Factory, but tons of people line for hours and hours and hours. Then you finally get there. They have you in groups when you audition. So it's about mm -hmm. five people okay. to a group. So my first time doing it, I did it twice. First time doing it, it was me and a, and a few others. Um, they asked me to sing a second song. Okay. I wasn't prepared to <laughs> sing a second song. All right. So I'm like, you know, I, I, I kind of bombed that because it was it really was just me and another guy who they asked to stay and sing another song. And I was like, man, why did I do that? I wasn't ready. So the next time I went, I was ready, but I had just made it to like the second round. Okay. And then after that is when you go to Hollywood. Okay. So, okay. But throughout it all, it was a great experience. And I'm proud of you because, you know, you're living, there's some child some teenager who is saying i want to be on there but feeling like well because i'm from chicago or whichever hood you know there or community that they're from there they may not have the opportunity to do something like that mm -hmm. but you're here from chicago and you did it mm -hmm. so you know you never know how our experiences can inspire somebody else because while we're thinking we're just going to go for it, somebody else has no idea how they can even take that step. Mm -hmm. Don't even believe in themselves. Right, or, or, right, or is scared to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, in my case, I was just like, you know, I, I think I was like 14, 15. I'm like, you know, I'm young still, but, right. you know, got right. nothing to lose, you know. Well, that was like uh, last year, huh? 14, 15. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Thank I wish. Thank you. I had to get you. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But it was just like, and then, you know how you see the people on TV that just be there to be there, right. like costumes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's real. They they do that. They show up like that, looking crazy. And then they do, like, go on to the next round, just for, I guess, publicity or whatnot. Oh, and gee. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. But it was, it was definitely a fun experience. Okay, well, that's wonderful. So, now, if you all watch K-Style K Chicago or Comedy Central Southside, you should recognize this beautiful face here. 
can recess. We're going to <laughs> be coming right, right back because I want you Class all to get a chance to get to know Miss Lakeisha B and understand why she is being recognized for her black excellence. So we will be right back with the Shy Love Radio Show on Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Right. Acknowledging Black Excellence, and we're talking to Miss Lakeisha B. So hopefully you've been tuning in, catch up with us, and we're going to continue to introduce her and let you all know what wonderful things she has been doing here in Chicago. So she is a singer and an actor. So those who are in the industry, feel free to contact her. She will be giving you all yes, her information. Please. So as I was saying, if you watch K-Style Chicago, or Comedy Central Southside, you should recognize that beautiful face there. Southside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's also been in stage plays in college in Spike Lee's school days. Girl, who who licked the, did they keep the part up in there when she licked the uh, part? Yeah. <laughs> you know what, I actually don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I was like, that's it. You know what? That's good for you. I'm going to have to try to find the video. That was kind of erotic. Right, right. It was my part. It was. It was. That's a great movie, though. So that was a great movie. That was actually my first play that I ever did. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Were you more nervous being in front of a crowd? Or do you feel like you're... Which one is easier for you, being in front of the crowd or just being in front of the camera? Well, you know what? I'll say this. I love them both, Okay. you know, but when you're on stage, then in, having that live audience there, it's like a rush, you okay. know? And like the chemistry. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, you mess up, you got to keep going. Like, mm -hmm. Chris knows better than everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you mess up, you got to keep going. You have no choice, so it makes you stronger, I believe, as an actor. But I love yeah. both, mm -hmm. yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. And so she's been in some additional plays, Romy's 2, The Love Triangles Trilogy, and Last Night as King. Yeah. And all um, those are done here in Chicago? Uh, yeah. Were they affiliated with any universities? Um, no. No, they were all in here. The, uh, Last Night as King, well, we uh, actually, that was in Schaumburg where the show actually Okay. Um, was on stage, um, but yeah, everything out of Chicago. Actually, I went to uh, I went to Northern, and that's when I did the school days okay. play. That was my first little step on the stage, and I was like, I love this. Okay. But you know, mm -hmm. it was because again, I, I was singing was my first passion. But when I got on that stage and went over into acting, I was like, okay, I can do this too. Yes, you know, yeah. and I don't have to be. Too young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still do. I can yeah. still do this at any age. Right. That's what I love about right. acting. So yeah. So after I graduated and there was nothing else to do with the gal because it was like the town full of cornfields. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> moved back to Chicago. Started networking with people. Started off doing background work. Okay. To get that film side to see what actually goes on on set. Right. Met a lot of people do that, and that's when I started doing independent films and plays and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you are in two musicals, I see. I I did a couple of musicals, yeah. Uh, Cinderella. Cinderella is one of them who I did along with Chris Greer here. Okay. Um, Cinderella, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, that was uh, with Miss Cassandra Bell. 
Coco I love dearly. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and I did another play uh, called Bag Lady. Yes. I was actually the lead in that play. And that was my first time actually singing and dancing. Does it have anything time. to do with Erica Badu's song? Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, the character, she had a lot of baggage. Mm -hmm. So I guess mm -hmm. you could say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but that, yeah, that was my first time doing a, a musical, actually singing and dancing. And I was just like, oh. I give props to everyone. Yeah. Who, the, who, who yeah. the musicals are, are <laughs> tough. Mm -hmm. It's like, because you can't just sit there and sing. You can't just act. You really have to do both. And and really bring that out on stage, okay. and it's it's a lot of work. Okay, so, much respect. Much yeah, respect. I had fun, but I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that's a whole nother monster. That's why <laughs> you know when when you make it look easy. Yeah, it looks until easy. you get involved in it, and then you realize how many takes, you know, how many takes it takes to get the scene done. How many, how many you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's nothing but uh, love and respect for the industry. Because yeah, it really does. You you watching TV or going to the movies and it's it's like this just looks like fun. And that's but what it's people like, think. Really they think it's so like people that on the outside they think everything is just oh do you really like I had a, a friend at one point actually say to me, do you really have to go to school for that? And I was <laughs> like, wow. I don't know. Why? Like, she had me questioning. Like, huh? I mean, because I know some. Right. I'm like, I, I mean, I know some people who are just naturally gifted who have it has worked out for where they really didn't have to take classes or do too much and things just kind of yeah. fell on their lap but yeah. i mean you definitely you always always want to brush up on your craft so even if you're good you could be great right so yeah so it def it's a lot of work yeah. it's not easy that's true so i hope you all are listening out there and letting this information marinate uh helping hoping that it is inspiring <laughs> you so that you can go for your dreams set your goals and be ambitious in your own lane. Mm -hmm. So you was also a lead character named Dicky in Pieces of David. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that was good. That's my that was good. Oh, Thank you. Man. Thank you. Y'all smoked you. that movie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Shout yes. out to Lawrence. Yes, shout out to Lawrence. Shout out to Lawrence. <laughs> If you're wow. watching, um, that's Lawrence Wallace. He was the director of okay. Pieces of David. That was my first lead role in a feature film. That's so, awesome. yes. And for people that don't know, it's about four women mm -hmm. who find out that they're dating the same guy. Mm. Interesting. So, <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> yes. Man. So, but here's the thing. They go to confront him like, you know, most women, yeah. Mm -hmm. They all get together and go to confront him. They literally just go to basically <laughs> talk to him and ask him, what's up? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? Somehow. Accidentally. <laughs> accidentally, they end up killing him. Oh. <laughs> literally accidental, though. It really was an accident. <laughs> so, <laughs> because, you know, that argument in his face, and yeah. next thing you know, he falls, and yeah, he's dead. Oh. So, literally the rest of the movie is, us trying to figure out what to do with the body. Okay. Okay. Hence pieces of David. Okay. Right. <laughs> pieces of David is going to be a great example in um, our little role and stuff later on because mm. there's a a, a little oh, question. A little question. <laughs> yeah, just just a little impromptu pieces of David. Pieces of David. Yes. Pieces of David. And that's on Amazon Prime, guys. So yeah. go check that out mm -hmm. if you have Amazon Prime. It's only a few bucks, but and I see you were in the series The G. The G, yeah. And That's also on Amazon Prime. Okay. <laughs> and you're in a commercial on T V uh with Illinois County Care. Illinois County Care, yes. Okay. That was my first commercial with Lime. Um I had got that put that through my agent mm -hmm. and then the lady was like somehow we ended up talking about my family. Y'all always talk about my family. Mm -hmm. They drive me crazy about love. So, but I mentioned them, and then she's like, oh, let's see pictures. So, of course, you know, being me, I got you know, yeah, right there. Yeah, plenty. <laughs> so then, like I said, literally the next day, I was booked, and my family was booked, too. I am very proud of you. Yes, that that was definitely a blessing. And I didn't, I didn't see that one. Coming. On behalf of Shy Love Radio Show, Shy Love LLC, 
I would like to present you with a certificate for exhibiting black excellence in Chicago, Shy Love. You know, we have such a reputation here for not having anything positive. <laughs> I am very proud of you. There's nothing that you can't do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is so nice. Thank you. You know, we, we can all do our thing and still be winning and still supporting and still yes, love still each support other. each other. Yes. Yes. Especially as women. We love. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's love. <laughs> We're going to uh, get on off into uh, some of the conversation topics where we can be giving real life examples here on the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. I'll be right back. Chicago, the best city in the world. We were just talking to Miss Lakeisha B. She is definitely someone that you should know, someone that you should hire. Yes, please. We are going to allow <laughs> her to let you all know how to get in contact with her. And then we're going to move on to some conversation topics. How about that? Yes, yes. Okay, so again, my name is Lakeisha B. And my mom named me after Keisha Knight Pulliam. Rudy. Rudy. So I she so I spell it like that. So it's L A K E S H I A. 
step my shoes up. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> but that's where she got the name from, regardless. So it's L A K E S H I A, last name B E E. You can catch me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all of that. Twitter is the same, Lakeisha B. Now, I have a, a series that I worked on called Plight of the Independent Filmmaker. That's mm -hmm. by William Adams and Lawrence E. Johnson Jr. You can catch that on YouTube. My episode will be out in the middle of February. So check that out. And just visit my page. Reach out to me. You can message me about any projects or anything. I'm here. <laughs> All right, so you all get in contact with her. And Shiloh, salute, Lakeisha B. Now, Ooh. that's what I do love because accomplishments <laughs> are wonderful. But we're Chicago. We, that's what we do here. Mm -hmm. Everybody is doing something. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what about our character? Because some people feel like the more that they accomplish, the less good character they have to show and your character is important because that's how you treat a, treat people mm -hmm. you know right, right. the type of relationship that you're forming with with others right and that's what's important to shy love we're going to get the money we're going to get you know we this is what we do here mm -hmm. that's the spirit of chicago mm -hmm. but how are we treating each other yes as a people we don't have to know each other personally to respect each other and mm -hmm. I, I noticed that a lot of people say uh, respect is earned not given if I'm just passing you back on the street how <laughs> can I earn your respect that's ridiculous yeah, yeah you, it does make you think about that saying a little bit more like hmm that's a tough guy just off the <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah right back right. Yes, right on the streets in the hood yeah. or something maybe just, just off the, the the basis of humanity yeah 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 well, you like know, they say, you know, treat others how you want to treat. The golden rule. That's, that's the my one, favorite you know, rule. I don't like yeah. rules, but that's my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the golden I, rule. I, I try to live by that. I yeah. know some people just, oof. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Yeah. They yeah. test yeah. you. They don't. test you. But yeah. yeah, I, I try to live by that. <laughs> yes, definitely. So um, let's talk about approaching the opposite sex. We have a handsome man here and a beautiful lady. Because especially with our youth and just people today with all this Netflix and chill, <laughs> you know, fool. Oh, no, I ain't got no <laughs> with the uh, Netflix and chill and so forth, um, the approach to females is caveman like. Would you say? Would you agree? Caveman like. You just said that. I said that. Um. <laughs> Cause you you know you you look suave, Mister. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, oh yeah, he always dressed. He, he knows. Know. He's he's been around a lot. He knows. He knows, <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Why? <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Need to teach some of these younger. So could you give here. could you give our beautiful <laughs> audience an example of how you would approach a lady such as she? Well, I don't know. You know, I'm an old cat. Um, and um, the thing is, is that we, we go all the way back to, you know, with the chivalry is dead. Uh, are you a gentleman? Stuff like that. I like opening up doors. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a birthday, buy us some flowers, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> see? Uh -huh. So, um, if you want to approach a woman in, uh, I would say, the 21st century, it's kind of different. It's kind of different. Um, depend, you know, I don't have too much of a problem with that because, you know, most of the women that I deal with are around my age, mm -hmm. so we're from the same generation, so we approach them the same way, but, uh, you know, gentlemanly, stuff like that, open up their doors, you know, walk up to them and say, hey, how you doing? That's all you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> Now, let's joking. say, let's say that's what you say. Hey, how you doing? Uh -huh. That's your opening. Mm -hmm. Because, um, and if you have sensitive ears right now, just plug them up. Because I'm going to use an example, and it's a little vulgar. Uh -oh. I was giving an example where a young man, um, a young lady was at a bus stop, and a young man approached her, and he approached her back. Hey, bitch. 
Oh. Give me your number. Oh. Give me your he, phone he so I put my number serious. in my phone. He yeah. No, he's serious. Yeah. So, wow. you know, it caught the attention of everybody on the bus stop. Um, and she was like, uh, you lucky my bus coming or I'll tell you about calling me a bitch. But she took his phone and put her number in his phone. Mm. Maybe it wasn't her number though. Oh, hopefully not, right? Yeah, because I know, you know, I, in my back in my days, a long time ago, I, you know, I, I used to give Empire I'm numbers. giving out Empire. Five, eight, eight, Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, yeah. So maybe it wasn't her number. Hopefully I, not. I would hope not. Hopefully not. Yeah. And uh, the young man who gave me the example, he said he asked the guy, you know, do you know her? And he's like, no, I don't know that bitch. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, something. Like, and I'm just like, let me get how how is that how did we go from how you doing mm -hmm. to hey bitch See, the thing the thing is is that 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 boy because mm -hmm. that's what he was he mm -hmm. was a boy mm -hmm. that boy doesn't have any respect for his mother his grandmother his sister yeah. or any yeah. other female that's in his family that's why he he, he uh, approached her like that and, and called her that name you know why do you and think that, that there's such a lack of respect for females uh it's 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 learned, just like anything else, like racism. Race, racism is a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. It's something that is actually taught, you know. If you see your father calling your mama uh, and her sisters, mm -hmm. your grandmother, the B word and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that's something that you pick up. It's like, oh, that must be pretty cool. It's a condition. That's how I'm supposed to. Yeah. Uh, and especially if they're responding to it. Yeah. 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 And then the other, and on the other, other hand, the young ladies that are responding to it and just saying that, okay, that's cool for you to, to talk to me like that. Yeah. We're they're, gonna they're lacking in other stuff. More of can, maybe lacking. why they're responding and why we have such a such a conditioning of disrespect amongst our urban community and just youth in the city period. We'll be right back with the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Stay tuned. Nobody talking with you today. I did it Acknowledging black excellence here. We were just talking to Miss Lakeisha B. We was having conversational pieces on disrespecting, how to give and tips on how to approach someone of interest. A simple hello, how you doing? 
Hello, how are you doing? Hello. How you doing? <laughs> well, everyone is not going to sound like that. But, <laughs> not as tall, as good. But, yeah, like, <laughs> like okay. when my fiance approached me, uh, we used we worked together. So okay. he, he came over and said, hey, what's up? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. during, you know, that time, yeah, that worked too. Yeah. You know, not mm-hmm. Not in it. Up, yeah, you know, I'm gonna so try that one. You know, I'm gonna try that one. How you you don't have to. Hey. And it's like, hey. lady, <laughs> my young yeah, little love, <sighs> y'all let mm-hmm. these boys call y'all bitches and you answer. They call you a bro, baby. You don't have a penis. You're not his bro. And then that's family oriented. I don't know. We can go deep into just that statement alone. No. But you, 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 <laughs> you are a, you are a female. You should be treated a certain way mm-hmm. with respect, as well as treat these young men with respect. Cause some of these little girls is hot that's heads true. as well. Yeah, it goes both ways. Mm-hmm. Just we as a people, when we talking about how you heard the, you know, daddy call the mama out her name. She asked to her granddaddy doing that to grandma and so forth, uncles and aunties and their mm-hmm. relationship. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a conditioning, but it's a unhealthy condition. Right. Mm-hmm. Our words are powerful. And the more you keep calling somebody a bitch, the more she's gonna turn into one. Mm-hmm. I promise you. Mm-hmm. And y'all like the bad ones, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We can acknowledge the the greatness of each other and treat each other with love and respect. You know, I know, ladies. You know, you know, back in our Beyonce, I want a soldier days. You know that that song popping, but you could be a respectful soldier. Like it's the difference between a thug and a gangster. Gangsters respectful. Thugs is a little more savage. Like you know, caveman throw you over your shoulder. <laughs> really, huh? Be you very know. careful with those larger women, though. <laughs> girls like that shit. Shout out to my. To I the mean, large girls. there should be yeah. some allowable caveman moment. Yeah. But it should be strong enough to handle one of the big girls. Yeah. Don't want to be But overall, there should be a certain sentiment of respect in all things, you know. There we go. So I'm going to show some respect to this black man right here, Mr. Christopher Greer, and introduce his wonderfulness to the world. This man right here is a musician, screenwriter, actor, director, composer, businessman. And he calls it edu- educated. Mm-hmm. Where, where, where they do that? Mm-hmm. Right oh, here in Chicago. The oh, greatness wow. that we already have here. Right here in Chicago. I'm, right. I was reading your bio like, you know what I'm talking about? It's <laughs> <laughs> well, I am proud of you. Well, I see that you received the Louis Armstrong Jazz Award. Yeah, that was in, uh, in high school I received that. Um, that was awarded to the the second best instrument, the second best musician in the band. I went to CBS band, oh. Chicago Vocational, oh, yeah. CBS in the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And uh, I was in the uh, marching band because we had a marching band and a we had a band and an orchestra there. Okay. Both of them were spectacular. Um, and so I came out as the the second best musician in the uh, school. That's right. So, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now the first one, the one that came in first, Mr. Tony Moore. Oh man, he's one of the, he's he's uh, on tour right now with uh, Bobby Caldwell, I think. He is uh, he's he's a bad man. Now he's a bad I like man. that. Yeah. You acknowledge that you came in second and then you shouted out who came in first. Mm-hmm. See that's that's brother. showing that's showing love. Oh yeah. Definitely. No, no shade, no hate, you know. Mm-hmm. For all the men, you gotta respect that. Number love. I see you were on network television and you were in feature films at the age of sixteen. Yeah, um, when I was sixteen years old, um, is when I actually started getting into the acting, the acting business. I was in a uh, television show called Lady Blue. It was on ABC. Okay. It started. It, 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 it's a. Um, I starred a young lady, I forgot what her name is, but her partner, it was a cop show, 
her partner was Danny Aiello, who just who just passed. Wonderful guy. I met him, talked with him for a while. I mean, at 16, I didn't know who this guy was, but he turned out to be a fabulous, fabulous actor, and may he rest in peace. But um, uh, after that, I went into, I, I did a movie called My Bodyguard, mm -hmm. not The Bodyguard, not to be confused with The Bodyguard with mm -hmm. Whitney Houston. Um, I was in uh, My Bodyguard, which uh, starred Ruth Gordon, um, Martin Mull, Chris Makepeace, and um, um, Dylan, uh, Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon was in it. It was shot on the north side at uh, Lakeview High School back in, when I was 16 years old. So you're talking about 1980. What were you? That's awesome. You were <laughs> I, I was born in 1980. Oh, okay. So, so Shia Love here was, uh, Melanie was uh, a one. No, my no she, was, she was negative one. She was months old. Yeah, if, it, if, it was, yeah. if, it was, if it was before December, I was on my way. And I was 16. <laughs> But it was a great experience. It was a great experience, and and that's kind of like what uh, I got bit Signed by the, the, okay. the bug. Because I see that. that you went on to be in Turks Barbershop Two, yes. The Lake House, yes. Empire. I got to give a shout out to, to Empire because they have put all of us. You know, they've incorporated all oh, yeah. of us into their uh, yeah. casting. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, APB. Exactly. Fatal Attraction, yep. Chicago Med, mm -hmm. The Shy, mm -hmm. as well as independent films with Maurice Ellaby Jones, mm -hmm. Dorian Johnson, yeah, yeah. Mark Harris, yeah. Cinder Williams, yeah. and Cassandra Bell. Yes, 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 yes. All like me and Lakeisha, we were um, the, the ones that actually really started my career seriously mm -hmm. was Cassandra Bell. Okay. She, um, she put me in a play. What was the name of the play? That, that first one wasn't shy. I don't know. No, she put me in a movie. Okay. Um, September Rain. Right, yeah. She put me in September. You oh, that was your first one? time? Yeah. yeah September Rain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was your first project one? That was my first oh. speaking role. I didn't know. Wow. In a I didn't movie. Know Cassandra Bell. Shouts out to my Shout girl. Shout out to Cassandra, Cassandra Bell. Shout out to um, Lou. After that, she went on to put me in. Um, uh, Chicago Nutcracker, also um, um, Cinderella, okay. and she's man, she's turned me on to a lot of other projects that she wasn't actually producing. Okay. You know, I did a uh, music video for Kiki Palmer. These um, are all great examples of yeah. love, acts of love, yeah. acts of consideration yeah. exactly. towards fellow people. Yeah. And we will be right back shortly with the Shy Love Radio Show on Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio and Spotify Premium to continue to introduce this wonderful man here for his black excellence, Mr. Christopher Beer. <laughs>
I Love Radio Show on Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. We're here with Mr. Christopher Weir, and we're telling you all why he is receiving his Black Excellence Acknowledgement here today. He does a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. He's definitely you. a man that you need to know. So we were just going over some of the um, shows and movies and stuff that you were in, and I see that you were also in local plays. Yes. And uh, commercials for Commonwealth Edison, mm -hmm. Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. Goose Island Beer, mm -hmm. the Peyton Manning uh, Children's Hospital. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Those were, those were uh, well, let's start off with the plays. You know, shout out to my, uh, my sister, Carla Monet Shaw, okay. who um, I've done, wow, I think I've done about two or three plays with her. Um, uh, we just finished up. We have uh, Meet the Old Schools, which we are turning into a um, turning into a uh, sitcom, and so we're going to be so keep your eye out for that. And I've also been in other plays. Uh, my mind is <laughs> yeah, it's been a it's been a it's been a busy uh, four or five years. So and 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 I'm and I'm blessed to to, to actually uh, be able to take, partake in. In those uh, projects, I was blown away by uh, the the uh, Commonwealth Edison commercial. Um, I was actually watching football game, and then next thing you know, my commercial came on. He was like, "Hey, that's Chris." <laughs> I was like, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." I that's did a that. good spot. You did that, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so um, the other ones, uh, Peyton Manning uh, Children's Hospital, went down to uh, Indianapolis and shot that. Okay. And it's uh, it was a great time. You know, Peyton Manning is a cool dude. And that's awesome to take, you know, be such a great representative outside of Chicago. Oh yeah, I try. Go and exhibit the talent that we have here. But I also see that you own Eureka Charities. I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Which provides meals and warming goods to the homeless and disadvantaged. I really like mm -hmm. that. Well, I don't own Eureka Charities. You, Eureka is uh, my lodge, uh, my Mason Lodge. Okay. I'm for Eureka 64. Shout out to my, my bros all across the world and okay, across the city. Okay, we shout out a salute to the, to the lodge. And, and so what I did, what I did was uh, once I became a Mason, I, I started and I joined them. I um, implemented my own charity where okay. we feed the homeless and we feed uh, the disadvantaged and things like Thank that. You. And um, uh, it's something that really, you know, makes you feel good to actually do something for somebody that can never repay you. Yeah, yeah, because I yeah. see that, um, to quote, when much is given, much is expected. And I have been blessed in my life, and I have to return these blessings to those who need. I thought that was exactly. very Salute. wonderful. Salute for that. Very, very wonderful. Thank you. you are remaining humble despite all of your accomplishments. And I want you to tell us a little bit about... Um, Gentleman, Two Cool Cigar. Oh, yeah. You know, I see Greer Music down here in oh, Filmworks Studio. Yeah. And that you also mentor young men and women with life coaching and career advice, which is needed. Yes, yes. Um, wow, where can I start? Okay, <laughs> Gentleman, Too Cool, we'll start with that. Uh, Gentleman, Too Cool is um, my uh, cigar brand in which they, we have uh, different flavors of cigars. Infused with alcohol and different flavors, chocolate and peanut butter and mustard. I'm just joking. Ain't no mustard. <laughs> Ain't no mustard cigar. <laughs> Everybody's like mustard. <laughs> <laughs> had a mustard cigar. But um, we have different flavors and stuff like that. We also have a, a woman's division, which is focusing on uh, cigars that because women smoke cigars too. Right. Uh, yeah. it, it's a woman's division. It's called She's Just Too Cool. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. It's a, it, it's something that me and my, my business partner, uh, Miss Sharon Chester, shout out to Sharon, hey Sharon, mm -hmm. and we came up, to, came up to uh, with together, and it's been, been pretty lucrative. It's still getting off the, off the ground, but okay. we're still moving in the well, right direction. Tell everybody how they can get in contact with you. You know, okay. people might need to, uh, you to cater and have your cigars at their events. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, you can, uh, you can reach me on Facebook. Uh, I'm the Christopher A. Greer. If you put in Christopher A. Greer Jr., you're going to get my son. <laughs> uh, uh, you can look at look me up on Instagram at uh, Chris Greer 64. Uh, I'm also on Twitter at Chris Greer 64. 
And uh, what's, what's Snapchat. that? Snapchat? No, no, I'm 55. I ain't got no Snapchat. <laughs> I ain't got no Snapchat. <laughs> ain't got no what? <laughs> no, no Snap no, filter. No TikTok. <laughs> no, I do have. I do have TikTok, but uh, <laughs> I just ain't. I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> but uh, other than that, you know, just find me in the air. <laughs> Please do, and I would like to present to you your certificate of achievement for exhibiting black excellence in Chicago, Shala. Oh, I am very good. proud of well, you, thank you, Shala. Well, thank you. I got a certificate, y'all. Yes. And I thought you were going to stand them up this week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you gotta do it like that. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> Thank you, man. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's get, get back to talking and uh, helping, continuing to help others, you know? Because when we're put in positions to help, we should help. Definitely. We should help. Definitely. So what about, let's go back to the uh, pieces of me. Because I I have a a question about um how would you break it to multiple people if you like in multiple people like he had four girlfriends right mm -hmm. um I don't feel like I don't, everybody has their own little methods but well, we go on with this. <laughs> I'm about to choose and being chosen, so you let a person know what's going on so that they can, you know, look at the situation in totality and choose whether or not they want to be a part of their situation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, say David, when he had these four girls, he could have been like, well, you know, I like you, 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 you and your friend, and you my world when I'm with you. Mm -hmm. And then it would have been an understanding. Versus the the confusion lies. and, and <laughs> the, <laughs> look no but what but the lies and that's good and it's better to one. lie or to mm -hmm. keep it one hundred mm -hmm. and Ooh. you know what and I think that's what the issue is with men and women mm -hmm. how we think we think yeah. differently yeah because the man a man all I mean I'm not gonna say all of you think this way but from what I see. <laughs> You know men tend to to think if they're honest with the woman, you know, it's not going to be a good turnout. But that sometimes some women can accept, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. When in reality, it's like if you are honest, like most women, right. they say, "I will respect that," right. you know, right. and you give them an opportunity, as you For said, two. to say, mm -hmm. "Okay." I want to deal with this, or yeah. do I want to leave? Yeah, and maybe we can even compromise. Right. You know? Right. So I always feel like it's best to be honest. Yes, of course. It's everyone. You're not going to always be happy when someone gives you the truth. I mean, it's right. your life. Of course. I might be mad. I might sit there, poke my lip out, some my feet. Mm -hmm. You know. But eventually, I'm I'm over it. Mm -hmm. So, but give me that option and be honest because if I find out, mm -hmm. then it's you know it's worse. Hell, it's the So yes. Be honest. Honesty is the best policy in the long run. It definitely is. And we're going to come right back. Don't go nowhere. With the Shy Love Radio Show on Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. I hope you all are enjoying the show. I'm enjoying my guests. Uh, you want to give them a hotline real quick, honey? Oh, yeah. And tell them you're doing a double oh, hour today? Has, oh, yeah. You know, this is the, uh, end this of the first is okay. the ending of the. Uh, first segment, we're doing a double segment, two hour show with the Shy Love yeah, Radio Show. Yeah. Today is my first little time. So, for those <laughs> who aren't able to uh, stay for the other hour, I'm going to give you all some hotline numbers to the Battered Women's Shelter 773 uh, 375 8400. Because, uh, you know, Maurice L. Lee Jones. Junior movie has been coming up. Uh, love beat the hell out of me. So if love is beating the hell out of you, mm. call the Battered Women's Shelter at 773-375-8400. Suicide Prevention, 1-800-248-7475. And the Illinois Mental Health Collaboration, 1-866-359-7956. And we will be right on back. And if you're interested in developing your own show and you want to join the family here at Pop Radio Worldwide, 
Hit up Poppy's Taking Interviews. Go to popradioworldwide at gmail.com. If you're having any trouble contacting him, uh, email me at shylovechicago at gmail.com. And we'll interview you and we'll work it on out and hopefully welcome you into the family. You can do it. I'm Conqueror Mafia back doing All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are now listening, listening to Mr. Mr. Dip Music. music. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Shy Love Radio Show. 
Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. We're continuing acknowledging Black excellence here in Chicago. We just had Miss Lakeisha B and Mr. Christopher Greer, and now we have Mr. Eric Mays. And we also have two brothers who are entrepreneurs, Mr. Napoleon Keys and Cordero Keys. Welcome to the Shy Love Radio Show, you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for taking this time to come and spend with me tonight. You could have been doing anything. You chose to be with me. Absolutely. Now, I appreciate that. Absolutely. So we're going to, I want to do a double bubble. We're going to get to the recognition. Two brothers. That's right. Blood. Blood, blood. Yeah. Both on a good path. It's not one in jail and one trying to do good. Both. Both. It's possible here. See all that melanin down there? Absolutely. Absolutely. You 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 walk past and you think it can't be done. Two brothers can't get along. Usually when we hear about brothers, we think of Cain and Abel, you know. Yeah, but we got some young guys down here, some brothers. Did y'all know that we are all young guys? Even those who read the Bible since Psalms, it says, ye are guys and also my children. We'll talk about that at another time. Oh, deep we can. But there's greatness here. And we have, um, Mr. Napoleon Keys goes by Anonymous. <laughs> he is a local creator. Creator. If you are a creative, you're a young guy. Because what does God do? Create, right? Yeah. An innovator. What do you know about innovator? Performer and visual artist. Sound like some talent. So, between being inspired from his father's artistic ability. It was a, it's a reason why, a few reasons, but it's a reason why I like this story here. He was inspired from his father's artistic ability by drawing Donatello from the Ninja Turtles. We all used to watch the Ninja Turtles. So, a lot of times we hear about, you know, no father. And yet he was able to see a skill that his own father had, emulate it, and not just draw Donatello, but come back and have the whole set drawn out. Inspired by his father. Something that's good, something that's positive. So we do have this energy and this spirit here working in this city. And then, we got him liking art, and he likes music. So he said that that developed during battle ciphers in school. How many of you little young Shadrachians missing school, and y'all could be at school practicing working? Because a lot of y'all rap anyway. Y'all could be doing ciphers safely in the lunchroom. So there was, there was a benefit here to where it was things to where he was growing up, and it was inspiring him, and he kept it going. Kept it going so to the point that uh, he and his brother ended up creating a business called Outlier. And his brother Cordero Keys, who is also a local creator, an innovator, and an artist, was inspired by his big brother who was sitting next to him and his father's drawing. I think that's a beautiful story. The, the, the power of family. We all come together and, you know, to unite. It's powerful. We're, they're, they're taking um, gifts from, you know, elders in their family, ancestors, and continuing to uh, develop those gifts and to create business to where his dad was just simply drawing. And now between music and art, they've uh, developed a business, which is a art, music, design, clothing, logos, basically a one-stop shop for media. I'm going to give you all the floor and give you all the chance to tell the public anything additional that you would like them to know. 
Well, yeah, like uh, like you said, just uh, being inspired by my brother, you know, we was able to really just like, well, for me, after that, after seeing them, I only, like, I only had one goal. You know, well, I had two goals, you know. One was, you know, like everybody else is, you know, play basketball, right. make it to the league. Mm -hmm. But then that, that was another one that was more closer to my heart, which is which is what we're doing now, mm -hmm. you know, and that's to that's to have our own business and to follow you your, your passion and to follow our passion. So, you know, because of that, you know, we went to school, we went to art school for that. Yeah. We went, you know, and uh, we've done apprenticeships for that, you know. Right. So it's just it's always it's just been that continuous drive, you know, to just have that. So. That's what we know. That's what we know. So. Well, I, I love that. And uh, I want to give you all your certificate. <laughs> and let you all know, give you all a shy love salute, and let you all know that we here at Shy Love Radio Show, Shy Love LLC, are very proud of Mr. Cordero, Treble King, Keys, <laughs> and Napoleon Anonymous. Thank you all for continuing to add to the build up of black history here to the build up of the city of Chicago where they say that there is no greatness and no love and we are given proof that there is. Right. Thank you. So shout out to you all, all right, for that. Alright, alright. <laughs> and we will be right back with the Shy Love Radio Show on Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio and Spotify Premium. You yeah, caught me off guard, bro. Napoleon Keys and Cordero Keys, Anonymous and Trouble King. We're going to give them the floor to uh, continue to introduce yourself to the public, let them know where to find you. Um, well, I reside on the east side of Chicago. Um, I've been there for like the, most of my life. Um, basically, what um, I'm go more into what Alibi is. Mm -hmm. It's a, um, why well, I just thought it was a name. The name itself came, kind of came organically, um, to speak about the word outlier. So, initially, the definition of outlier is the, um, that thing that you don't see that comes from the out from the outskirts. I describe it as like the punch that you're not looking for. Like if somebody throws, you know, throws a sneak hook. Yeah. Um, so in business or in any type of industry, 
it's good to have a good element of surprise. Absolutely. Especially with the way that things are being run by um, those in the higher ups. They have their they have their plan and they have their uh, agenda. But and they and they and they like to look at certain places. But greatness seems to come from those places you're not looking. So mm -hmm. that was a, one of the reasons why I picked the pick the name outlier. Also, it's also to out the lies that's out there. Absolutely. Uh, so the the word actually has outlay and outlier in it because um, yeah, it's a, it's the layout or we're laying out a plan mm -hmm. to out the lies. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I dig that. I dig that. Okay. So yeah, we just, um, that's what I mean by like innovation. We, we, we think on a, a different way. Um, and it's always good to have this guy right here. I mean, God knows what he's doing because he just bounce ideas off each other all the time. Sure. I'm proud of both of you. Shout out to Luke. Absolutely. Y'all make sure to uh, keep them in mind, follow them, contact them, see how you all can get together and work it. Let's help each other make our dreams come true. How about that? Yeah, they, they, they from my side of town, too. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We got this. East side is in the house, baby. East side, east side. is in the <laughs> house, baby. Uh huh, uh huh. So now we got all this testosterone here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to show that you're west side. Well, you know I'm west side. No, yeah, you you got to show that you're west side. Yeah, west side. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's love all over. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. 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 You know, roof some things in me, show Make it some, some you things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, you know, I can't take that away. I can't take that away. So uh, let's talk about handling disagreements amongst men. Mm. Let's talk about that. Okay. Because uh, it seems like, you know, a little disagreement, here come the pow pow. Mm -hmm. How can we prevent the pow pow? Well, well first of all, since I'm just, I'm just going to say this. It's a mindset. Okay. Um, when you uh, walk up to another individual, we all got to understand we may be 75% in agreement, mm -hmm. but there's always that 25% that you're not going to agree with somebody on. And how do you handle the person that doesn't agree with the 25%? Right. Um, I think that we need to have classes and stuff like this to learn how to de-escalate mm -hmm. situations and bring some kind of uh, thought pattern to the point where even at 25%, we can meet 12.5. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and when you have uh, people that will find, get in that mindset, then everything will move smoothly. That's why we need the elders at this particular point, you know, to oversee some of the things that uh, the young brothers are doing. Not that they don't know, it's that some some they don't know how to get things done sometimes right. you know it's a rush you know somebody once said uh to me uh, when i was coming up here i said uh want to rush down the hill and get all the bull no walk down and get them off but you know young you want to rush down and sometimes rushing leads to disaster yeah. Yeah. so until we find out uh where we are in our mindset and then bring the right people to the table and oversee it and it expands from there, that's when the peace comes. Like, we sit at this table right now, three buzz right now. Mm -hmm. We come in total agreement on things. As a matter of fact, we can show love, you know. I ain't know this from the east side. We say east side, everybody's like, yeah, what's up, east side? The same way you said west side. Well, what's up, west side? You know what I'm saying? So when you, you walk up, I mean, ain't nothing but love. Mm -hmm. And until we learn how to love each other and learn that uh, we're individuals. We're not robots. Right. We have right. our own way of doing things, but we can all come together and work on the same vision mm -hmm. and still uh, 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 complete the project and everybody can be happy. And until we find that out, we're going to have some problems. Yeah, and, and that's why we have these type of conversations because, you know, when that adrenaline is running and 
you know, the situation is occurring, it's like you are immediately responding the way that you more than likely were conditioned to respond. Mm -hmm. And you know, you ready to swing, or you ready to go ahead and get the gun, or you know, call up a few people. And it's like, how can we, you know, find ways to de-escalate de that? And like you said, like the elders need to come out. But I've heard young men who, when they were talking about freeing Larry Hoover, they don't know nothing about Larry Hoover. Mm -hmm. And the ones who do, don't respect him. Right. They, they look at, they look at it as old heads, you know? And then you got these old heads who like, I, I got to keep my hands off of because I'm going to kill a kid. You right. know what I'm talking about? Because they very disrespectful. Yeah. Well, so it's like, what so, can we do? Okay, so, so like, like, uh, uh, he was stating, it is a mindset, mm -hmm. but in order for us to even get that mindset, there's some things we have to unlearn. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like it's it's really it's really a scrap the project and start over type of thing, mm -hmm. and the mentality. You know what I mean? And um, I'm grateful for the old you know for the old heads for the OGs who who, who built certain things, but when they leave, there ain't no blueprint. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, until until we actually, yes, we need a balance. We need the OGs and we need the young ones, but that doesn't mean that we got to agree on it, whether or not you like, if I got locks or not, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Or whether or not I sag my pants. That just means that we, like, unity is not about, you know, agreeing on everything. Mm -hmm. It's just about understanding the objective and getting to it. Mm -hmm. So, I think... First of all, we need to get an objective. That's right. <laughs> and we're going to talk about getting an objective. Yeah. As soon as we come back with the Shy Love Radio Show, with Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Hope y'all let this marinate. Be right back. You know what? This is actually like that. I'm going to take my life. I can deal with Dread Hill. But I can't, but I can't deal with the same I know, 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 I Hey, welcome back to the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio on Spotify Premium. We're talking about black excellence and we're talking about finding an objective. Uh, ways for men to deal with disagreements. Disagreements between the youth and the OGs of the street. Go on here. Um, my thought on that situation is uh, we have to also really go back and figure out what defines masculinity. Mm. Okay. Like if you sit up here feeling within yourself that this certain disrespect or whatever is taken away from your manhood, then you're going to react, you know, in a, in a primitive or, you know, an instinctual way. Like, it, we were taught to protect so much because we start out with so little. Mm -hmm. And then that, then that thing comes, um, comes on the inside of us. The, our circumstances on the outside affect us, affect us on the inside. So we just respond in that way. You get with a group of guys, you get with a group of people that feel the same way as you. I was noticing one thing um, here lately, and it was, I, I, it was something that I didn't pay attention to um, prior. But people wear that pain on their face. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can get a group of young kids 
and they all have this thing, like they're shocked, sad, disappointed, you know what I'm saying, and angry all at the same time. Cuffed y'all in love. You know, they, they're wearing it, and uh, when you recognize that this person has the same thing as you, you automatically know that if it goes down, he's thinking the same way that you think. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes him or me, mm -hmm. you know. So it really is, it really is a reprogramming, and and that should be one of the main objectives. What is it that you define as a man? Where did you get that from? That's a good question. Yeah. Because I, you know, a lot of masculinity seems like feelings and emotions are not really, you know, involved in. Um, yes, you're men. And I'm a woman, but we both have uh, estrogen and testosterone in our vessels, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just at different levels. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think that, I think a lot of people need to cry. <laughs> yeah, I give you that. Yeah. I forgot the song, but it was like, you know, real man cry. <laughs> yeah, that, I don't think that that takes away from a man because he cries, you know? Well, I'm going to tell you this. I don't know what I tell you. Old school men ain't gonna cry in front of you. You know they gonna mm -hmm. they go somewhere else and do that. <laughs> they going outside. You know, yeah, we're not going. We're not. Yeah, we're not gonna do it in front <laughs> no, of our families right. now. Yeah. But, but with your woman, so that she can hold you and comfort you. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> See, so so for me, I've been able to, you know. Uh, I understand both perspectives. Like, okay, yeah, all right, real men don't cry because they're supposed to show that they're strong. Men are supposed to carry carry the burden, they're supposed to carry the weight, you know. But in order for you to have a real partnership, you should cry in front of your wife. Yeah. You should cry in front of your wife. I think you so know right why? Now. Because now, now she knows that she, you know, that, right. Right. that right. I can that I can protect you in this area. Right. You know, that's the one thing that men which is kind of crazy that we still don't really get that, but emotion is how you really connect. Yeah, that, that bond. Yeah, that bond, well, you know. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, you know. Um, I, I, I get all that, what everybody's saying, but a woman judges a man from the time he get up in the morning to the time he go to bed. Mm -hmm. And pretty much she know the type of man she has. So, um, we out here fighting, striving, trying to get things done, you know, take care of our family. You know what I mean? And I think we were just talking back there a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, what it is, we need to change the mindset. You know, some guy called and say, man, let's go do this lick. Well, here's the new lick. The new lick is starting your own businesses. Come on. Okay. Y'all um, hear what the new lick is? The, the, the new lick is starting your own businesses. We just talked about the entertainment thing, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, since me and you know we we've done a couple of films together yes, yes. and uh, we have a film coming out uh, this Friday called magic you know directed Billy Ray Valentine and and much love and respect um, there are kind of directors that you work for and I've worked with you know the producers and stuff like this here you just talked about Maurice Hubby yes. Jones yes. And Dorian Johnson yes. and yep. um, new you, you got new times that's mm -hmm. right and TC Collins mm -hmm. and, you know, you got Roche mm -hmm. Bowling, yes, yes. Emmanuel Stewart. Salute, you know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brother Ali, mm -hmm. you yes. know. You got, I mean, it, 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 it's something, and, and we can't forget, you know, the boss lady, Miss Cobb herself, and then Mark Harris, you mm -hmm. know. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I it's salute. right. It, it, I mean, it's, it's kind of so if we would just get the young people to come and say, hey, listen, this is a new look. Let's learn how to be a PA. Let's learn how to do this. Let's learn how to do that. Something right. different. They don't know. And then you find out that you like something. Let's stir the pot up a different way now. Mm -hmm. Cause you see, this one ain't working. Right. If you yes. keep if if you keep going back and forth to jail, something ain't right. Yes. Yes. I'm just saying you know, something ain't something yeah. right. Yeah. You yeah. know what? What's you yeah. know? Yeah. Just saying. I'm just saying. You know. Um, it, 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 it's crazy, you know. Years, so you, go, you go, you go, you go, you go to jail, and then you come back. You think you got the plan, and then you come back and you go back to jail right, again. Right. But you tearing your families down. Tearing your family apart. Your children mm -hmm. come see you in prison, and all this, and so we, we we need to change the flavor. Definitely. You know what I mean? I agree with that. So, I definitely yeah. agree with that. And you know, just just we as people, and I want to say for the ladies, like, if this man 
trust you enough, is comfortable enough with you to show you those emotions and those tears. And they are genuine tears. I'm not talking about like our fab heartbeat when Buddy was crying to do everybody. <laughs> but genuine tears comfort him. Don't be like, man, bro, you know, come at you too, you know, you too weak for this. Don't make him feel bad for um, expressing himself to you because they hurt just like we hurt. You know, we should be able to, especially as partners, be able to express that part of ourselves with each other and get an understanding and respect each other to say, okay, you know, I think it'll help to alleviate some arguments and stuff, actually, because if I know to what degree this issue is bothering you, mm -hmm. now I know how to kind of decipher and move around. You know what I'm right. saying? And see if I can take some of that weight up off of you. And that was just like, and I'm, I'm, um, just to say, like, yo, just because I cried don't mean I'm soft. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, Tears I don't, not it's, it's, I'm just getting at, at all. all. So, some people cry when they mad. Exactly. So they yeah. 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 Tears you know do not what? take away from a person's strength. Exactly. Sometimes once you see a tear drop, a body falls. Exactly. So you can't, exactly. you know, you can't do that. Exactly. But we're going to be right back because this, this gentleman right next to me, my brother, Mr. Eric Mays, we're going to introduce him and tell you all why he is here shortly. So stay tuned to the Shy Love radio show on Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeartRadio, and Spotify Premium. We'll be right back. Welcome to the new Chicago. I know some niggas they try to get on. Some niggas they make it fall. It's in the herb and we're rolling Jalon. Everybody do some sun and spirit free roll. Everybody's funny, know me, but they don't know me. Sit low deep on the pull low G. Search for a full week, nigga, get no sleep. Nigga, bitch, on me, got a front row seat. Niggas had it, baby. Way, way before Cabo made it, baby. That shit went double platinum, that boss in the E. It's in the Emory, cause we got chemistry. Real watch queen to this queen key shit. Young free bitch talk about free shit. Everybody turn killer after Chief Keef. You can say the wrong shit, get in deep, deep. New Chicago. Welcome to the New Chicago. They say they got the city called Pinocchio. They turn it pretty, you know that shit over here. Wait till the trenches, you know that shit dirty, yo. They turn enough for what pop me a perky, yo. I don't like the BMB if I put them bands to rap on I ain't never get a chance, nigga. I was in chance to rap on them. We gon' make it believe me. I might listen to Drizzy. We gon' catch up all way, belly pee shit. Chicago needs this. Remind me of the old day. Got a white bitch that cook on. I hit her over the sink. I just might fuck her the team. She won't hip no like a drink. Think I'm in the here rock star. Do a drill to say I'm sorry. It's a cruel world, my listen to Joe's world Gotta watch my back out here, cause this life too strong This shit like do or die, you don't know who it got Fuck it with us, this shit suicide Don't know who the truck, don't know who it got Go dress him up with a suit and tie OTF, you know that's Ike, that's Booker, that's Blow Better let Von free, I went stepping on niggas like I'm me more Legend of all me, got the left on with Valley Red car with the red dogs like Valley Don't get smart like a bag of words. I'ma make them world remember me. 
Someone that you should know. He's a military veteran, retired law enforcement, an activist, and an actor. Those are some specific. You, you make power moves. It's like everything power moves, Mr. May. Uh, I'm just, you know, all praise is due. All praise is due to a lot of my Christian friends out there. And, you know, in Jesus' name, you know. Um, Amen. Amen. I just wait at the right place at the right time. Sometimes, you know, you don't know the journey in which God takes you. Right. You don't understand it until later on in years. And um, I have just been fortunate. I've been through quite a bit. Um, I, I, I love my people so much. Uh, I'm one of the most unknown because I always stay in the background. I'm not the one that in front, want to jump to the mic, but I'm always there to uh, lend a helping hand or Definitely. support. Yep, and I know that person. So, um, the acting uh, came along because uh, as a social activist, you know, sometimes, you know, people don't know who you are. So when in, in this town, this city of Chicago, you know, they didn't know. So I, I jumped into acting a little bit, you know. And hopefully that, you know, people see uh, my work in acting and understand that I, I love them, the people in the city that are not doing as well as others. Right. Um, the young lady that has four children and lives in a three room uh, apartment, mm -hmm. barely making it. The brother I here that just got out, got child support up to yin yang and can't find a job. Mm -hmm. Um, those out here who hustling and grinding every day just to survive, right. you know, I, I, I speak for them. Okay. You know, I, whatever I do, I try to do for them. Uh, my homeless people that's out there, I, you know, try to take the soup and everything out there to them and blankets, you know. So uh, I'm a product from the east side, from the 70s when they had the white flight. Okay. And uh, my mother bought... Um, a house from a uh, white uh, Irish police officer when they were moving out of the city on 83rd and Kingston. So all my, all my people out there, much love and respect. Hello, salute. Um, I have gone through various things in my life. Um, that's why I can, I understand now I can touch bases and talk to young and old, my, 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 my godfather, John Paycheck Johnson, he told me when I was coming up, he said, son, you gotta be able to talk to him in the boardroom and be able to talk to him in the street too. Right, I agree. So, I, I, that's always been me, and the people that know me uh, know that sometimes I, I say things that's on my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, it is what it is with me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I got number love, you know, I give my all. Every day, my family knows that I get my all. Sometimes I'm exhausted, yes. you know. But but you, sis, mm -hmm. you, and not nothing about me. This is you. But we, we hear about you. No, but I, I, but I want to tell everybody about my sister too now, because she be doing a lot. She be fighting for veterans, mm -hmm. and 
I mean, she got the show, she's an actress, I mean, and she hold me up on the set. She, she be like, this is it, let's get together, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so I appreciate you so much. You okay, know, I much love, you. much love and respect, mm -hmm. you know. I, and, I, I love y'all, genuinely in my heart, you know. Absolutely. But I want to tell everybody the best of the wonderful things you've done. Like, you received a New York Best Film Festival Award. Yeah. Well, for it was uh, 2003 for A Lover for My Husband, mm -hmm. I did with uh, Brandon Finney. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just in uh, the film with Christopher Greer, mm -hmm. White People Money. Okay. You know, as, as Mark Harris. Film, yeah, mm -hmm. Mark Harris. Mm -hmm. You know, once again, Angela Cobb, thank you very much, boss lady. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, Brother Ali, uh, White Men's Trouble. Yeah. That's going in the Harlem Film Festival in, in May. Okay. And then you and I have worked with Billy Ray Valentine yeah. and Marcus, uh, Maurice Ellaby Jones. Yeah. And um, we got, like I said, Magic coming out this Friday, everybody. Walmart, Redbox, I think Hulu and Netflix and all that really mm -hmm. good stuff. And then Little Caesars coming out in July. In right? July. Yeah. And Maurice Ellaby Jones, you know, who a man. Gain the world, lose the soul, and mm -hmm. also uh, love be the hell out of me. Right. You know, so uh, these these things uh, just right place at the right time. Even with uh, so it's like Universal Atlanta, yes. God Atlanta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like with uh, Sister Roche Bowman and and uh, Manuel Stewart. You right. know, cutting it close, cutting it close. Right. Yes. You know, yes. I was up in uh, cutting it close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So That's I mean, my yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, you know. Salute, sis. A big salute to all of them. Yeah. Dorian Johnson, the New Ties, TC Collins, mm -hmm. you know, all of them, mm -hmm. and all them fantastic actors and actresses that we work yeah. with on all these projects. You know, yeah, much love and respect. Here. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, you know, I appreciate you bringing people on your show. And it's, and it's my act of love, you know? Yeah. Hey. I'm, f I'm feeling it. I'm right here. I'm feeling <laughs> it. So, you know. It's my act of love yeah. to you because I see you. You know, and if we can do for each other and help to empower and uplift each other, we are so quick to come against the other and tear somebody down. You know, even with worrying, especially, you know, industry wise, with people trying to do work wise, coming against people's money, like, it's not that serious. We can have disagreements and not try to tear each other down. You know what? I'm going to say this here. Uh, two guys who was like infantry with me coming back into the into the acting thing was J. Tone Smith. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's my brother, you know, he got me in contact with uh the casting agencies. Mm -hmm. And uh James Lett, yeah. who I met on the set of uh, Empire. Yeah. Who introduced yeah. me. He referred me for yeah, Magic. That's actually. right, that's right, that's so right. Thank you for so, that. So so you know much love and respect to them brothers. You know, mm -hmm. I try not to forget where I come from. Yeah the journey and the people that helped me yeah. a long way. Yeah. A lot of the people, yeah. you know, is on a personal note and at some point it's the exchange of love. Absolutely. And the love that you have shown me, I didn't forget that. Absolutely. So I'm saying, come on. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, we can we can do this. We can do this. But I wanted to let you know that um, you know, in Little Caesar by Billy Ray Valentine, you played the my boss Papa Benny. And I just loved you. I just love. I just love that character as a mob boss. He was so humble, but it's kind of like your personality. You got such a humbleness to you. Well, you know, I think it says, you know, uh, Billy. Billy, you know, brings it. What's in you? He unlocks it. He brings it out. You know, and also you stayed on me too on the set. You know, so the whole thing of it is it when a, you're a down moment or you mess up, let hey brother, come on, let's get it together now. Mm -hmm. You know. And that's what you need, people to care for you and understand, you know, that there are going to be good days and bad days. Right. So we're here for each other, to uplift each other. Here for each yeah, other. Yes, yes. That's supposed to be the objective, yes. Yes. So I would like to present you with your certificate of achievement for exhibiting black excellence in Chicago, Shy Love. This is for you, Shy Love. Salute. You deserve um, that and much more. Oh, wow. Thank, you know, thank you. Um, I didn't expect this tonight. <laughs> you know, this is, you know, wow. Um, 
you just said that and stuff. And it's, you know, like I say, we are accomplishing things here in Chicago. That is what we do. That's the spirit of Chicago. We move. But the way that we treat each other and the way that we carry ourselves, despite our accolades and accomplishments and status or whatever, that is just as important as the accomplishment. And you are a great example of somebody who has accomplished much. You know, we even go through, you know, you uh, mentioned the FBI agent waiting magic, you know, new ties with Dorian uh, Johnson. You know, you, you covering people, Mark, Mark Harris, white people's money, white man's trouble. That, this one, uh, that white man's trouble was uh, pausing real quick, so I was like, I didn't know they had trouble. Why, what's, what's the white man's trouble? So it's a, it's a, a, we, we flipped, uh, yeah. Brother Ali flipped the script on him and showed the other part. What if, what if the roles were reversed? reversed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, and that's going to be in the Harlem Film Festival coming up, I think, in May. Okay. So, uh, everybody be on the lookout for that. You know, I, I, like I said, I'm just blessed. I'm right place at the right time. You know, I, I met the right people and, and nothing but love. And uh, I always fight for us to come together to do great projects and do great work. Yeah. And for the kids out there, done. for the kids out there, I just want to give one shout out to all my kids out there, Beethoven, Coles, Tanner, all over the city. Uh, 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 the, the, the innovations, mm -hmm. you know, high school, you know, uh, I just want them through me to know that they can make it. Right. I don't care how hard things are, you can do it. Right. And, 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 and that's what this thing is all about. Right. I just want them to know. You're beautiful inside and out, Mr. May. This guy. Inside and out. That guy. Mr. Mr. DDA Singh. And, and, and if I can interject, aren't you in prayer too coming up? Yeah, well, you know, brother, you, you know, I'm just. So much, this man works. I just, no, I just, no, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not even about me because I'm learning, you know. I've been around people that have been doing this for years. I just happen to, like, again, I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. You know, I just, when, I just want my people to know I love you. I love you dude. That's beautiful. without. That's know. beautiful. That's beautiful. You are definitely an example of remaining humble. Remaining humble and continuing to show love despite your elevation. And may you receive all the blessings, all the love, may all your wildest dreams come true. Thank you, sis. I you know I am. You deserved it. Oh wow. You deserved it. You have very good character. Very good character. Well, I just want to say shout out to my kids. My family love y'all. Tell yeah. them where they can find you all before we go on our break real quick. Well, Facebook, Eric Mays. You just hit me on there and you see my picture on a uh, little book. <laughs> you know, just click on there and uh, you know, you follow me. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Chicago. Uh, I hope you all are enjoying this show. I'm enjoying it. This is great. <laughs> this is great for me. Uh, but we will be right back with the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Like a 
Radio Worldwide, iHeartRadio, and Spotify Premium. This is our first two-hour segment. We're introducing black excellence and people that you should know here in Chicago. We just got through with Mr. Eric Mays. Definitely check in with this man. Even just to be around his, his spirit. That's how the energy just rub off on you. You know, energy transmutes. And, you know, right off break, you know, pop head or something here. <laughs> going hard, oh, you know. Yeah. And speaking of like a little hype man, we're going to go into Mr. D.A. Sam. What's good, good, everybody? Welcome to the Shy Love Radio Show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Mr. DDA Sims is an actor, hype man. He helps in the community and works in the healthcare industry. I like the diversity here in Chicago. You know, we doing a little bit of everything. Yeah. Haitian and Jamaican. We miss you. It's of that descent. Ça so I see you were in a few films. Rise of the Real Man, Generational Warfare, Love Beat the Hell Out of Me, and two upcoming movies, Mind Games, and What Is It for a Man to Gain the World and Lose His Soul of 2026? Yep. Now, actually, Mind Games just finished with okay. the premiere Saturday. Okay. And it, Congratulations. And y'all missed that one. <laughs> it was talking about the progress or the criticism in the judicial system. If you, if, if you don't know about the BARD program, make sure you read up on it, because they beat Harvard. We beat Harvard. Even though we lost to West Point, we did get a rematch though. I played Nate Hill, one of the BARD members and one of the excellent technical debaters in the BARD program. That's excellent, that's excellent. Let us know what you do in the community. Now, as part of the community, I am a activist, prayer warrior, and also, I'm a home health care attendant. That's what I do. Okay, okay, that's good business, that's good business. So, Mr. DDA Sims, I would like to present you on behalf of Shy Love LLC here at the Shy Love Radio Show. A certificate of achievement for what? exhibiting black excellence here in Chicago. I am very proud of you, Shy Love Smooth. I want you to keep up the work. I'm glad that you know there is a mixture and there is diversity here. <laughs> When I was um, just coming up like a little teenager or whatever, my cousin would not take me uh, across certain little lanes because she said that I was going to get up hurt or whatever because the guys, if they asked you for your phone number and you told them no, one, if you did give them a phone number, they was calling that number in your face to make sure it was a real number. <laughs> And if it wasn't a real number, you at the end of the block here, and they telling you, you got three seconds to get off the block. And you can't turn around when you basically at the corner, you gotta get all the way down. Yeah. So there's been poor coping skills in handling rejection. What are some ways that we can, some tips that we can give our men and our women when handling rejection, when we want something, but it's not received, you know, the, per the person that we want it from don't want to give it or don't want to allow it. How, how can we handle that? Well, if you get rejected, all you got to do is move, move on, move, move on. What if your feelings really hurt and you really, really like her? Can we, can't replace that. All, all you have to do is find somebody that can top her go after that if it happens then ask God let him fight let him fight with you when he fight with you then you 
that rejection is gonna be, he's gonna be in, a, in the back, somewhere lost in the sauce. Bye, move on. Move on. There's plenty out here. Move on versus disrespecting us versus forcing yourself on us versus move on. You know, that's a really difficult because the times are different from, you know, where I come up and what it is now. Uh, a lot of people say that, you know, man, oh, they, 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 they said, look here, um, that, that was back then. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is now. Right. And uh, I, I told them I'm really not with the now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? But I can adjust to it, but I'm not with it. Right. Um, when I was coming up, you know, you had to have some type of job, you know, for a young lady to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Now it's not like that, you know. You had to, you know, you get up and you see a lady stand on the bus or you open the door for a young lady or something. And you go to the door, you knock on it, and, you know, you meet the parents, you know, when I was coming you up. Knock on it, not sit outside door, the right, house. And, and blow the horn, horn. right. Yeah, yeah. Now, they you know, now they do that. So um, what, what I guess is gone is some of those old school values that has been passed down throughout the years. Um, that's a very difficult question. It's, it's, it's up to the lady to decide what they want to deal with and what they won't deal right. with. I mean, really to tell you the truth, the, the, the women, y'all the mothers of the earth, the goddesses of the earth, I mean, y'all set the tone. You know what I mean? I mean, we would like to think that, but Actually, in reality, I mean, we're going to tell it like it is. Mm -hmm. um, the woman sets the tone. So it's what she would allow. Because if she don't allow it, it's not going to happen. So if she is protesting against it, do you try to force it? Or what you, what's the other alternative? Well, 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 well if, I, if I can speak, um, if, she's, if she's giving you signs, that she doesn't want it. Of course, you're gonna you're gonna be you know have some kind of feelings. Get out of them. There's another there's another woman who you can go after. I mean, um, it's it's up to it's up to you who you want. It, every, everything in that, that you do, it starts and ends with you. And of course, God is gonna tell you, wait, hold on. That's not, that's not, that's, that, that's not the one I, 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 I picked for you. Because if you allow God to pick him, he is the ultimate matchmaker. It's not us. He is the ultimate matchmaker. So whatever, whatever, whatever God destined for you, that's it in a box. And, and it is a covenant between man and mom and God. Because it could be put together and be destined. But those two people have to agree to walk in alignment for the purpose. And you have to have the discernment to know what is what and, you know, so forth. And here yeah, I agree with, you know, buying somebody else, uh, which is good because there's plenty of beautiful women out here in Chicago. You know, so I, I hear the wine scene just got convicted. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Because that was a bunch of bull. Mm -hmm. And it has been going on for too long to where a woman is not comfortable being in her skin because men are doing whatever they want to do, you know, uh, and enforcing things. Because sometimes you're not allowing it. It's being forced upon you. Uh, you're being manipulated into it. The seed is different, uh, you know, techniques and tactics. What well, you gonna say, bro? I, you know, through the beginning of time, men and women, there's always been some kind of shenanigans, uh -huh. some kind of <laughs> some kind of shenanigans. Hey, we we we, I I I, I've done it when I was younger. You know, uh, it's a part of a growing process, and then you learn, uh, 
what's really going on in life. Okay. You know, and but you don't know unless you're taught that if you're around people that will instill that value yeah. on you. Yeah. You know, women are not bitches, they're not hoes. Yeah. Um, you goddesses of the earth and you also bring forth life. So my whole thing of it is is uh, you should be be treated as such. Yeah. You know. And if you allow to be treated that way, then they're gonna to continue to treat you that way. But I'ma say this. What does that show about your character? The fact that you can get away with doing something dirty and yet you walk in. What does that say about you? That that just that just tell you that's just that it's actually, like a victim statement is, to where you know you are you allowing it. But well, you doing it. Well, what does that say about the the doer's character? Well that means that their standards are, 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 are set. The, the standards are not set to the highest level of expectation. But can I say, is it, would it be that or is maybe their self-esteem is very low? It could be that. The self-esteem is very low. It could be that the self -esteem self -esteem be that low. the condition of the environment. They did not balance on that. Hey y'all, we've been having a great, great, great show. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all have enjoyed us here at the Shiloh Radio Show on Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Remember, if you want to join our family here at Pop Radio Worldwide, please email popradioworldwide at gmail.com. And if you cannot get in contact with him, you can uh, inbox, email me at shilohofchicago at gmail.com. And we will set everything up. I hope y'all enjoyed my first two-hour segment. We will have another one next Monday. So don't forget to join us. I had a wonderful time with you all. Shy love salute to the back, black excellence. To those who uh, could not be here, names were not given. Shy love salute to you. I am proud of you. Continue to do your thing. Who's thing? Your thing. I love y'all. Oh, <laughs>